All right, so we'd like to simplify the cube root of 22.99. Cool. Yay. Said all this four times. All right, how do I do it? Do you want to split it up so you have the top and the bottom, like the cube root mm -hmm. of... Okay, so I, I can do that, right? So I know this thing is the cube root of 22 over the cube root of 99. Do I know the cube root of 22 or the cube root of 99? No. Okay. Yeah, we could try to break them. I would probably try to break them here as opposed to here because why? You might want to cancel these out. Yeah, there might be something I can cancel that might make my life easier. We could really break it here and then we could cancel cube roots of whatever it is. Maybe we should do both and see. So let's see. I'm thinking kind of off to the side, right? 22 is what? 2 times 11, that's it, that's all I can do, okay, and 99 is 3 and 33, 3 and 33, which is 3 and 11, okay, so I can say this is the cube root of 2 times 11 over 9 times 11, right? Then I can cancel the 11s and say this is really the cube root of 2 ninths. Yeah. That's actually all the further I can go with that yeah. anyway. Okay. If I was to do this first, I would say, okay, so now I'm, I'm looking at the other way, right? This thing I saw at the beginning. And I want to see that I should get the same answer, right? Math should kind of work in multiple ways. I should be able to get the right answer doing this. So if I say, okay, let me see, this is the cube root of 2 times 11 over the cube root of 9 times 11. How do I get the 11s to cancel now? You have the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 11. Very nice. And on the bottom, I've got the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 11. And then you can cross multiply. Yeah, now I can cancel these guys. I'm not canceling 11s anymore, right? I'm canceling cube roots of 11. But it's still the same number, right? It's still number over itself is 1. Great. Cool. Yeah, so I think canceling 11s is easier for me. But, you know, to each their own. Cool. So at the end, I get this business. Is that what you were getting? Oh, no. I thought it was going to be something crazy like you have to multiply the bottom to find the cube mm -hmm. root of something. Yeah, when do you do that? Is that only when it's a. Okay, so, so there's this technique your book gives you called yeah. rationalizing the denominator, right? I'm not a huge fan of this denominator word, but <laughs> really what they mean is rationalize the bottom, get the root out of the bottom, right? Okay, so if I look at this guy that I ended up with, this dude here is the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 9, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying, okay, you could, if you wanted to get the cube root out of the bottom, the reason for this was a pre-calculator thing, but if you wanted to get the cube root out of the bottom, you could multiply this thing by something so that the cube root would go away at least in the bottom. You're going to pay for this. You're going to get some other more complicated stuff in the top. So I might look at this and say, OK, I've got the cube root of 9. That's 3 times 3. To get something I know how to cube root, I need another 3, right? Which would be, give me 27, and then I could cube root it, right? So I might say, OK, well, if I multiply here by the cube root of 3, right? Then this bottom piece will be the cube root of 27. But I just changed this item, right? Mm -hmm. So this arrow right now doesn't represent equality. I would kind of like it to. So what do I need to do? Uh, 
Multiply yeah, I need to multiply the top by the same thing. This should be really familiar, right? This is the common bottom technique. Okay, so I might multiply it by this on the top as well. Right? And then I get I get the cube root of 6 on the top, and on the bottom I get 3. 3. Cube root of 27. Yeah, cube root of 27 is 3. So is this simpler than this thing? I don't know. I don't feel like it really is. The reason that we used to do this fairly often, actually, and the, the reason that most books still teach this technique, although I don't care anymore, the reason is if I wanted to compare this to 2 thirds, Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I can't compare this number to 2 thirds, because I have no idea what the cube root of 2 ninths is. But this number, right, once I get the bottom to thirds, I can compare that to thirds. Right? Because I could say, okay, cube root of 6, let's see, cube roots I know are 1, 8, and 27, right? Cube root of 6 is the closest to. 8, right? So I might think, well, I don't really know what this is, but maybe it's like approximately 2, right? Yeah. It's between 1 and 2, it's closer to 2. You guys see that? So this thing is almost 2 thirds, almost two -thirds a bit smaller. You guys see that? This is why we used to teach this technique, because we used to do this comparison by hand. Since the advent of like reasonable frickin' calculators, you just cram this in your calculator, right? You want to know what this number compares to, you do two ninths and cube root it, you get some decimal, and then you compare that to whatever you were interested in. You guys cool with that? So this rationalize the denominator technique is not one I care if you know. Cool? So one more test. 